The key architect of New Labour is back in the front line politics today. Well, sort of. Lord Mandelson will be on a new panel the mayor has put together, so his views can be heard by the government during the Brexit negotiations. Joining him will be Baroness Vadira, who was criticised for her part in the collapse of a project which was meant to upgrade the underground and which cost taxpayers hundreds of millions of pounds. Here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. They were once key players in New Labour. Now Peter Mandelson and Shriti Vadira have joined a new team, recruited by London's mayor to advise him on Brexit. Baron Mandelson was twice forced to resign as a cabinet minister. Baroness Vadira was one of the driving forces behind a disastrous project to partially privatise the modernisation of London Underground. Vadira was described in a newspaper profile as abrasive and aggressive. Labour supporter and author Christian Woolmer wrote an account of the underground fiasco in a book called Down the Tube. Shriti Vidira was absolutely key to this. She was an advisor to Gordon Brown, who was the Chancellor of Exchequer in the mid-2000s, uh, and she drew up a lot of the detail of the scheme and negotiated with the private sector companies. So her fingerprints were all over it. The idea was to let private firms take charge of upgrading the tube over 30 years, but in less than a decade, the project collapsed in total failure. The public-private partnership wasn't just an embarrassing failure, it was a costly one. Even now, it's hard to put a precise figure on the billions of pounds wasted. The Conservatives said Baroness Vadira's involvement raised questions about the Mayor's judgment. It's a matter of regret that he's chosen to include her in his panel on Brexit. This is a hugely important issue for the capital. We need serious people advising the mayor, and I worry about some of the appointments he's made today, including Baroness Vadira. But Baroness Vadira's appointment was welcomed by another of the mayor's new team of Brexit advisers, the man who in all but name is the leader of the City of London. I'm not an expert on her previous roles, but she's a former government minister, former advisor, to the government. She's chairman of a European bank that's operating in London. Again, that brings a really valuable set of experiences to the discussions. Baroness Vadira was unavailable for comment, but sources close to her said her involvement in the tube was 16 years ago and she has extensive skills and knowledge of European issues. Simon Harris, ITV News. The Met says it is reviewing its detailed plans for Christmas and New Year in the capital after a terror attack in Berlin. The force says it's considering a range of possible threats, including the use of large vehicles after a lorry crashed into a crowd of shoppers at a Christmas market in the German capital, killing 12. With more, here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. The Christmas market on London's South Bank was no place for pickpockets or shoplifters. There were police everywhere, keeping up a constant flow of foot patrols through the crowds. After the terror attack on the Christmas market in Berlin, a high-profile police operation was inevitable. Not that shoppers seemed at all worried. Living in London uh, for all of my life has actually... Um, I've grown around the atmosphere of that we, this is a safe country. And... Yeah, I'm not too worried at all, yes. You feel perfectly safe here? Yes, perfectly safe. Even before the stalls opened, police were handing out anti-terrorist advice leaflets. And, uh, you know, if you see things suspicious, give us a call. Be vigilant and report suspicious activity was the message, although the market's first line of defence could be its location. The location is fabulous. There's no vehicle access. It's very difficult to get to if you're going to try and get a vehicle, and it's extremely difficult to get to when you're walking unless you walk a mile or so either way. But the nearby food market is next to a road. So here, heavy-duty plant pots were being lined up to form a makeshift barrier between the traffic and the stalls. Well, it's better than nothing, but it's not brilliant. Uh, and uh, what, what you'll see across London is specifically designed in hostile vehicle mitigation, which will stop a truck at 50, 60 miles an hour. Hostile vehicle mitigation can be something as simple as concrete steps blocking access to all but pedestrians. The attack on Berlin might have focused attention on London's Christmas markets, but Scotland Yard is now also reviewing its security plan for New Year's Eve, when tens of thousands of people will watch the fireworks from the banks of the Thames. London's mayor said police tactics would change in the aftermath of Berlin in the same way they did after Paris and Nice. The Met Police is always reviewing its tactics, just like the terrorists and bad people are evolving 
finding new ways to damage us. We've got to evolve and find new ways to keep us safe. For now, that means more police among the Christmas market stalls. Simon Harris, ITV News, The South Bank. When is a fares freeze not a fares freeze? Well, for 7 million Londoners, the mayor has kept his promise. Their fares won't go up in the new year. But for 4 million others, it looks like Sadiq Khan hasn't honoured his election pledge. So is that the case or was the fares increase for some commuters or was in the small print? Our political correspondent Simon Harris investigates. Londoners won't pay a penny more in 2020 than they do now. You'll pay not a penny more in 2020 to what you're paying now. You'll pay exactly the same fares in 2020 as you pay now, not a penny more. Sadiq Khan's election campaign promise couldn't have been clearer. Or could it? Not long after he took over at City Hall, it was apparent the mayor could only freeze some ticket prices. So from January, there will be a fares increase of almost 2% on all travel cards, daily and weekly fare caps, most single pay-as-you-go and paper tickets on National Rail and some pay-as-you-go fares on London Overground and TfL Rail. The mayor argues even travel card users could benefit from his price freeze if they buy, for example, a single fare outside of their normal zones. But TfL's own figures suggest four and a half million people will pay more to travel in 2017 than they do now. At Ealing Common Underground Station this morning, some commuters were still expecting their travel cards to be frozen. I think it's been frozen by the, by the, by the mayor, isn't it? The price of, of the tickets are frozen. I'm paying more for my fare. He said we wouldn't be paying more for our fares. It's a clear lie. Unfortunate that it wasn't communicated in a more transparent manner. They never stick to what they say anyway, so that doesn't surprise me either. The mayor argues his hands were tied because many TfL fares are pegged to mainline rail tickets set by ministers. The government needs to explain how it is that I can freeze fares and TfL over the next uh, four years, but they can't... Because you're spending the... money, they'll say they don't have the money. Well, well, I found efficiencies. There's always efficiencies to be uh, found. Lovely for him to make a promise that someone else has got to deliver, isn't it? I mean, I could promise that uh, you won't have to pay any fares at all. But, of course, it wouldn't be me having to pay for that promise. According to City Hall, 7 million Londoners will be better off because of the fares freeze. But for millions of others, it won't be such a happy new year when they buy their travel cards next month. So did he willfully break his promise or didn't he? Well, the mayor will argue that far from breaking his promise, he's delivered it in full. He said he would freeze TfL fares and he has. Of course, what he didn't spell out during the election campaign was what he meant by TfL fares, that they don't include those travel cards and those daily and weekly caps. If he did, though, he didn't share it with us. You'll remember at the time there was a huge row about how much the fares freeze would cost. He said it would be a lot less than what TfL claimed. What we don't know is whether the mayor knew all along that his plan didn't involve all these other fares and therefore he could bring it in at, lo at a lower cost than TfL thought it would be. But uh, certainly a lot of commuters come January the 3rd are going to discover that a fares freeze isn't a fares freeze as far as they're concerned. Simon, thank you. While many of us will hopefully be enjoying a peaceful and tranquil Christmas, some Londoners will be waking up to the sounds of drilling and demolition. Railworks are scheduled to take place in Camden in North London on Christmas Day and in Deptford in South East London on Boxing Day. Network Rail say it's the only time they can do the work that's needed, but residents are less than impressed. Meanwhile, with severe disruption to rail services expected in the coming days and weeks, we'll be live with Jenny Longden at London Bridge to hear how journeys will be affected. But first, Simon Harris on the people whose Christmas will be far from peaceful. The season of peace and goodwill has a special meaning when you live next to a railway line. When the trains stop on Christmas Eve, silence descends. But across London, the railway's neighbours are facing up to a different seasonal noise nuisance. In Camden, these old carriage sheds are due to be bulldozed to make way for the new High Speed 2 line to Birmingham. And the work begins on Christmas Eve. Those works are going to continue throughout Christmas Eve night, right through Christmas Day, Christmas night, Boxing Day, and to finish on the 28th of December. I appreciate this work has to be done, but what we're asking is simply that Christmas Day is a free day. Surely these people who make these rules and regulations, they must have a Christmas somewhere and know the importance to the people. 
It's not a very good way to start this project. Camden is only one of a number of Christmas construction sites. This is St John's at Deptford in South East London, where the station yard will host an army of engineers working on the tracks. Residents here are not happy either because they know what to expect. Living next to a 24-hour construction site has become something of a Christmas tradition. Four Christmases ago, St John's echoed to the sound of reversing lorries and diggers as network rail replaced a bridge. The Snow family has unhappy memories of sleepless nights interrupted by noise and the curtain-penetrating glow from powerful arc lights. This is the second time in four years that we've been, we've been interrupted in this way at Christmas and we've been given less, less than three weeks notice so that we can't make alternative arrangements. Network Rail said the yard was a crucial access point allowing engineering teams to get their heavy equipment onto the tracks. We do our best to keep our neighbours informed, those that live near the railway, of the work that we're carrying out, particularly at Christmas time. And there is never an ideal time to carry out engineering work. But at Christmas, when trains aren't running, we can get 24,000 engineers out there to deliver a bigger and better railway for passengers. In Camden, it's just the beginning of the massive scheme to build HS2. Homes will be demolished and the work will last beyond the next decade. This is unlikely to be the only Christmas where residents have to grin and bear it. Simon Harris, ITV News, Camden.